Today has brought news on both sides of the U.S. Capitol. New House Speaker Mike Johnson passed $14 billion in aid to Israel, but the bill faces problems ahead. And Senate Republicans took on one of their own over top military promotions. Congressional correspondent Lisa Desjardins is live on Capitol, uh, Capitol Hill to unpack the latest on the domestic policy. So, Lisa, let's start with the debate over aid to Israel and Ukraine. What's the latest on those two issues? This is a fiery debate, but just in the past few minutes, Jeff, the House did in fact pass that $14 billion uh, aid package to Israel. It was largely a partisan vote. The way Republicans in the House did it, they would fund that money by cutting money to the IRS. Now, the CBO and others have said that that actually would increase the deficit because less money for the IRS means less revenue for the United States. Republicans dispute that. But the point is that Republican Speaker Mike Johnson has really passed his first, at least, initial test, passing through a bill that was not clearly, uh, its fate was not assured earlier today. White House, uh, members of the White House staff, I'm told by Democratic sources, in fact, made phone calls to try and defeat this bill today on the House floor, to try and keep Democrats from voting for it. In the end, 12 Democrats did support this bill. Now, as you say, there's trouble ahead because over on on the Senate side, they would like a bill that includes Ukraine money. They do not want it offset in this way. President Biden has said he will veto this particular bill. So those are going to be the much diff more difficult tests for Speaker Johnson coming up ahead. But for now, at one aid package has moved through one chamber. Well, as you tick through the tests facing the new House Speaker, you can also add avoiding a government shutdown. Uh, Congress has two weeks to hash out a deal. What's it look like? That's right. Now, tonight, the House is going to stay in late because the idea is that these House lawmakers say they're going to stay to try and make up the time they lost for the past three weeks. You can see on the House floor they're still there right now. It is not clear, however, despite all this time that they may be spending here, if there is a plan going ahead to avoid a shutdown yet, Jeff. Uh, right now, uh, the House Speaker has yet to really formalize what he wants to have happen. It looks like he wants a short-term funding bill, probably through January, and we're not quite sure what the Senate is going to do. I guess the tone is good, is what I would say, but until we see real plans move forward, there is still the possibility of a shutdown in two weeks. And in the Senate, Lisa, there is a renewed bipartisan effort to, to break the blockade that Senator Tommy Tuberville has put on these top military promotions. And there's pressure coming not just from Democrats, but I was watching the floor action last night. It was Republicans, many of them military veterans, and it's clear that their patience with him has run out. Tell us more about that. That's right. Well, today, something new. We saw three confirmations. Let's look at the list of the military commanders confirmed today. One, the chief of naval operations, the Air Force chief of staff, and the assistant Marine commandant. That's important because the Marine commandant himself, Eric, uh, um, Eric Smith, is in the hospital. So the Marines have been without a number one or number two until that vote today. All of this riled up Republicans at their own member, Tommy Tuberville, whose holds really opened up this situation. And listen to this extraordinary sound last night from Republican Lindsey Graham talking again about a fellow Republican, Tommy Tuberville. There's a reason this, is, this has not been done this way for a couple hundred years. No matter where you believe it or not, Senator Tuberville, this is doing great damage to our military. I don't say that lightly. I've been trying to work with you for nine months. Folks, if this keeps going, people are going to leave. Jeff, you know what a rare situation that is in either chamber, but especially in the Senate, where both parties stick together. But here, Republicans really, most many of them have reached a boiling point at Senator Tuberville, but he's not moving. He still says he will not allow military promotions, now hundreds of them, to move in large blocks. And Lisa, while we have you, the House yesterday took a rare vote to expel the New York Congressman George Santos, but he managed to keep a hold of his job. How? How did that play out? This was a fascinating vote. New York Republicans brought up this resolution to try and expel uh, this member, George Santos, over lies, deceptions, and, of course, the 23 felony counts he is charged with. I want to play some of the sound from this debate. First, from Mike Lawler, one of those Republicans leading that move to try and expel Mr. Santos. There is not enough time to go through the litany of lies that Mr. Santos has engaged in during his campaign and during his time in Congress, including just recently a claim that his five-year-old niece was kidnapped by Chinese Communist Party spies. 
That was something that Santos had said to a Times reporter, and it was not verified by police. Police said that was not true. But Santos made an argument that he is innocent until proven guilty, that he needs due process, and that his case should move through the courts, not through the House floor. And making that argument did win over members. It takes a two-third vote to expel a member of Congress. Again, it's only happened in five, five times in congressional history. Mm -hmm. uh, but Santos did not even a majority voted to expel him, so he survives. Lisa Desjardins, thanks as always.